Hello and welcome to exercise zero of KJ's crash course. I'm KJ and here we are going to uh, be downloading Studio. Studio is the uh, place where you develop all automations um, using UiPath specifically. If you are taking this and you already have Studio downloaded, feel free to continue on to exercise one. Um, if you uh, are maybe a customer of UiPath, however you haven't installed it, please check with your IT teams as they probably have it uploaded in the software center. For everyone else who might be doing this for a personal use, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get stood up with what um, we call our community edition. It's gonna give you everything with the essentials that you'll need to build virtually any automation that you want. So I figure what we can do is we can just walk through how you set that up, how you download Studio and show you some basic um, things things uh, within that and then after that we can move on to exercise one okay so how we download studio um, is what we'll do first is we're gonna go to cloud.uipath.com okay and this is kind of our uh, portal uh, it's backed by Azure so what we do is we set up an instance for you on that. So we give you uh, what we call it's an automation cloud instance um, that allows you to use some basic modules in there. And that's where we go download everything that we need. Okay. So what you'll do is you get to you go to cloud.uipath.com. It'll redirect you here and then it'll say sign into your UiPath account. I'm assuming none of y'all have created one before. If you have, you can go ahead and click any of these. However, I'm, I'm assuming people who are watching this probably have never touched this before. So I'm going to walk through how to create an account. So what you'll do is you'll go to don't have a UiPath account, you'll click sign up um, and then you'll get redirected to a page to just fill in some basic information like you're doing. So uh, if we already have an account, it'll tell you if you do. But what I'm going to do is I've also built one for um, here, uh, KJ's Crash Course. So I'm going to put that in course at gmail.com. I'm going to give myself a password. And once you have that, you'll click create account. And then once that's done, it's going to ask you to verify your email. So go to here, verify the email address in your email. You can use anything, um, any email that you have there. Um, there you go. Click continue. And then right that it's going to redirect you and then get you into the, the portal to, I believe, yep, your full name. Uh, my name is Crash Course. You can give your name, uh, country. We just do this to track who's downloading our product. It's not like we're tracking anything more than that. Um, United States. Uh, I am in North Carolina, North Kakalaka. You don't need to send me information. I work here. Um, you can feel free to do it. And then you're going to give it an organization name. Uh, what this does is it actually creates a unique URL. So you can always go back to that every single time, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to call this KJ's Crash Course create organization and then once we're done that will complete the sign up and then it will redirect you into automation cloud so once that loads we will download the software we need to build all the rest of these exercises as part of this course awesome cool so then what you'll see right here is you get right here welcome to uipath automation cloud run your first automation right now we'll walk you through running a sample automation in minutes that's exactly what this is for we don't need to touch any of this now just know what this url is so you can see cloud.uipath.com if you put that in and you're logged in and it's cached it will automatically log you back in um, if not what you'll do um, or if not, right, and you're not logged in, you just put in your email and password and you'll get redirected. Okay. And then what happens here is you're going to click this download UiPath Studio. Um, and hopefully we bang this out super quick. And then from that, it literally tells you exactly what you're doing. Launch it. We're going to install it. And then on, uh, once we do that, we're going to sign in to connect it so we can authenticate the license we've given you. And then create your first automation, which is exactly what the crash course is going to do. So we'll let this load here. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to step into the tool. At that point, you can just leave it off. I'm just going to show you a little bit around in the orientation. And then that way you can reference some of the material afterwards to connect the dots with what we just covered today. Okay. Like any other software, it's about a gig. You know, it's about it's a three fourths of a gig, so it is pretty big. Um, the installer, not the actual software itself. The software itself is super light. Okay, awesome. So obviously, you need to accept the terms in the license agreement. License agreement, hey, it's free. You download it. We're not 
tracking anything, feel free to read it if you want. And if this is a you know turn off, feel free to you know not install it. Um, we usually recommend quick. Obviously, you can do custom. I'm gonna walk through custom real quick just to show you what it looks like. Um, what you can configure is for all users on this computer. So what's really cool about our software is you can do it in service mode or user mode specifically. Um, it's super nice, and then you can choose the specific packages that you want to download. Um, within that where you can choose our developer just the robot so on and so forth none of that's really necessary I just wanted to show you a little bit what's under the hood what we're gonna do though is we're just gonna go back we're gonna go with quick and we're just gonna leave all the defaults what it does is it creates a UI path folder in your my documents and it installs it on your program uh, files I believe in the 86 version okay so you click install and you just wait for it to install Awesome. And once it's done, it'll say launch UiPath Studio. So go ahead and launch that. And this will pop open uh, this. Uh, it gives you the latest enterprise version that we offer by default. UiPath releases uh, two big releases of, of this software, really all of them every year. Uh, comes in April and October. Um, and it does it by year, month, and then whatever patch or, or version of that specifically. So as you can see, 2022.10.3. So this is the latest version that we created back in October. Awesome. So then from here, right, you must restart studio for changes to change effect. So then right there, it'll say right here, usually it prompts you, I've installed this before. So once you open it up, it'll prompt you. It'll show like a, a bar that says like, oh, log in, click cloud.uipath.com. You'll click sign in and we'll do it. So if you don't get that and you have this, you click the sign in button and you get this. This is exactly what it is. It didn't automatically prompt me. I click sign in. And it's gonna redirect me back to here to authorize to what it was. Whatever browser you're using, Firefox, uh, Edge, or Chrome, all of these exercises are going to be built in Chrome, but there is no difference. Um, it is going to ask you right here, there is a extension that is happening here. When the extension is added, go ahead and enable that. That's going to allow us to automate on top of those websites because we are going to be using web-based applications for the exercises. Okay. Um, so then from that, we get into here. We are signed in. And then that's really all you need. Um, so right here, some key terminology that we're going to need here. Everything that we build in Studio is called an activity. Okay, And activities are all put together to form what we call a sequence. Now, a sequence is a set of steps in, you know, step A, step B, step C, step D, etc. Um, and then from that, right, we build that as part of a process. Okay, So as you can see here, we have a couple different options here where we have process we are going to build processes for all of these exercises there is also the concept of a flow chart a flow chart is allowed like oh if i have this action and then maybe there's like three different ways you can go after that sometimes a flow chart is better for that but a lot of our exercises aren't going to need any of that so we're going to build processes so um, like i said you don't have to do this i'm just giving you a quick orientation i click process and then you'll see you can give it a name a description the location as you can see it redirected to my documents folder uh, you click create we're going to do this for all of them don't worry you're going to see all of this in real time um, in the following exercise but i do want to step in and just give you a little orientation of where you search for activities how you pull them in and then the properties pane which i think is most important awesome so right here what you'll do is here's the quick orientation what your screen probably looks like is something like this where you see a project over here and then blank and then just a main sequence that's totally fine um, what we're going to want to do is we're always going to want to have the activities pane open we're not going to be doing much with project at all until the later exercises but activities it may also look like this as well on the side you can have it on the side too you can really have it wherever you want um, i personally like having this docked specifically um, on the bottom However you want to have it, no big deal. Also, the same thing might happen over here as well, where you see object repository instead, right? We're just going to be editing the properties pane for our activities. So I just wanted to give you that, right? The importance of it once again, right? Why are these important? All of the actions that we are going to perform and tell our robots to do, like clicking a specific button, for example, typing into a specific field, um, choosing a item in a combo box, interacting with Excel, right? I think you get the idea. Every single thing that a robot does from an automation perspective is what we call an activity. So if we wanted to, for example, click a specific button, we would pull in a click 
And then within a click, right, it has a set of properties. Now we're not going to edit them too much and it's not too cumbersome, but just remember everything that we build in a sequence of steps, right, involves a sequence of activities that will have properties that allow us to do something. Okay, that is all we needed to cover today for exercise zero. So if you got studio installed and you feel confident, feel free to move on to exercise one. There is a supplemental PowerPoint and some instructions if you just want to do it that way. Um, uh, following there is a link below in the description. Um, otherwise, I say congratulations on downloading Studio, and let's get started with exercise one. I hope to see you all soon. Cheers, guys.